say a few words. Um, communication is, we all have experiences with communication. My early experience with communication was uh, obviously growing up at my mom's house in the North Valley. It wasn't until a couple of years ago where she stopped using the phone that had the cord where you could literally go all over the house with. And it was a prelude to the mobile phone. But uh, so many beautiful conversations happened on that, on that phone that's still on the wall. But um, well, the struggles that we're about to embark in are, are incredibly important struggles with serious, serious ramifications for our, for our economy, our families, our democracy. But they're nothing new, and we should not be intimidated by them. Um, and we should uh, use our skills to, to see through the rhetoric. We're, we're bombarded on a daily basis that market forces are good, that government regulations are bad, that government needs to get out of the way, get, get out of our lives, leave us alone so that we can have economic growth, freedom, the flag, Christianity, and all that's good in, in the world. And so it, it's, it's, that's, that's too simplistic. That, that's, that's not correct. Any serious thinker or, or economist or political scientist knows that politics and economics are intricately related. That the economic growth of our nation in the 20th century could arguably be tied to uh, government involvement, government initiatives, government uh, education, uh, and government spending. And so, so we have to get away from that because and we have experience with, with policing and, and managing the internet and ensuring that it's uh, internet neutral and free by, by the railroads, by public highways, by telephone networks. Even a hardcore capitalist will agree if I own a railroad and I own uh, cattle and I transport my beef on my railroad, I cannot preclude other cattlemen from uh, using my railroad to transport their beef. The capitalists call this a monopoly, and even according to their rules, it's, it's bad and, and illegal uh, and unacceptable. And so the railroads were built with public lands, with, uh, with slave, slave and low-wage workers, with, uh, with public money, and the rail lines built our country, and they served all of us, but they cannot be monopolized. They cannot be manipulated. They cannot be exclusionary. Because ultimately, um, in a philosophical sense, they belong to all of us. The public highways were strictly government money. And so when you hear people talk about, we don't need government regulation, the strike line on the interstate is government regulation. The, the yield sign on an on-ramp is government regulation. But for those government regulations, if you will, it would be a traffic jam uh, of, of epic proportions and nothing would ever get done. And so in, in search of perfect markets, uh, reasonable regulation and reasonable legislation and reasonable government can not only, uh, does not, not only does not prohibit economic growth, but facilitates economic growth, but facilitates markets, job creation, and the growth of the And so with regards to telephone, we don't want, when I call someone on the telephone, that's telephone neutrality. Nobody can stop my communication. You know, once Lily Tomlin plugs me in, it, it's me and the other caller. They, and so there's railroad neutrality, there's public highway neutrality, there, there's telephone neutrality. There must be internet neutrality in this nation and we must fight for it. highways and whatnot came to be known as common carrier rules and these rules apply to these common carriers. Under the Telecommunications Act of 1996 there was a legal distinction between telecommunication services and information services for, for whatever reason, oversight or clerical error or whatnot, information services um, are not subject to the same common carrier rules as telecommunication services, even though they're the same thing. But words have meaning. And so in a recent uh, court case in the Washington, D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, Comcast versus the FCC, the courts, when the FCC tried to regulate 
Comcast, who was blocking information between, uh, between persons and parties, the courts, I think, uh, ruled correctly and said, no, the FCC cannot regulate information services, uh, but they can regulate telecommunication services. And so, so the opponents of internet neutrality are singing and saying, well, you know, the, the, the courts have spoken, let it be written in stone. Well, guess what? There's a third branch of government. It's called the legislature that makes the laws that the courts interpret. Congress has given the FCC full authority over this, and the five FCC commissioners have, three of them have authority to simply change the language of the regulations and so that there is no such thing as information services, whatever that is, that all the internet must be considered telecommunication services. And so we must implore the FCC. The FCC must reclassify broadband internet connectivity from information services to telecommunication services. Yeah. And as it relates to New Mexico, um, once again, these uh, public-private partnerships will prevail. Local uh, municipalities and, and counties grant what I call uh, state-granted monopolies to the Comcast carriers and the, and the local broadband carriers with regards to cable television, um, cable television, television, uh, mobile phones, all of that stuff has been hashed out. We just need to include internet services into, into the language so that the FCC can properly uh, manage it and regulate it on behalf of the people, on behalf of our democracy, because it's consistent with job creation, not only creating jobs in New Mexico, but creating careers in New Mexico, bringing tomorrow's industries to New Mexico, biotechnical firms, energy uh, companies, trade, not only with the rest of the United States, but with Latin America. If you run an internet company, you're just as good in Mora as you are in Manhattan. And so I would, put, I would put our human capital here in New Mexico against any state in this country. The innovation, the love, the family, the entrepreneurial skills. If we give our children access to the internet, we teach them media literacy skills, they will shine in a 21st century economy. And so, so there's tremendous uh, opportunities for New Mexicans, not just Latinos, to, to, to uh, to shrink the digital divide. But the last component of, of struggling for a free internet is media literacy. Media literacy. Teenagers, all of us receive hundreds, thousands of media images on a daily basis. We must train ourselves how to manage this information, how to decipher this information. Two years ago, along with the Media Literacy Project in New Mexico, we introduced legislation so that every high school and middle school in this state will teach a media literacy course. Of course, legislation is a slow process. We got it into the curriculum. We got it written in, te in the statutes that, that it is a, uh, a key core um, elective. We'll push the envelope this year and try to, try to make it uh, mandatory for each school to offer it as an elective. Then we can make it mandatory that each student take it, and then ultimately down the road, once the infrastructure is there and the curriculum is there, that every student in Mexico, in order to graduate, must take a media literacy course. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> because we can't change the First Amendment. We're going to be bombarded with alcohol commercials, liquor commercials, uh, imagery of fashion, uh, telling us that, that, that our bodies are less than, that, that we need this to be somebody, that everybody else has this, why shouldn't I? And so we need to train our young people on how to decipher that information, how to be strong human beings, how to be confident human beings, and how to be good consumers uh, so that we're not buying a whole bunch of junk that we don't need. So in any event, thank you for that. I look forward to seeing you in Santa Fe. Let's put some friendly pressure and some street heat on our FCC officials to change the classification. And thank you for the beautiful t-shirt. Have a good night. Love you guys.